Hi everybody, it's Mr. Bowl here, and this is our final lesson in our year five topic, the impact of war. Uh, this is lesson eight, uh, and we're going to conclude with asking this question, which war had more impact on Britain? So was it World War One, which as you know, went from 1914 to 1918, or was it World War Two, which went from 1939 to 1945? And we're going to look at uh, five headings. We're going to look at the casualties in both wars, which we looked at in the first few lessons. Uh, that's the number of people dead and injured. We're going to look at, uh, there's an example of a uh, war grave. That, uh, we've seen uh, images like that before when we discussed about remembrance. We're going to look at bombing. Uh, there's a World War II bomber, uh, a German bomber. You can tell by the markings. We're going to look at the impact of the war on children, which we did back in Lesson 6. And uh, then we're going to look at daily life, which war had more impact on daily life. Here's an example of, uh, as you probably remember, this is a whole week's rationing in World War II. And lastly, we're going to uh, look at it overall, which war had more impact. That's what we're going to finish with. And on that one, I'm interested to hear your opinion, which might be different to mine. And that, as you know, in history, it's fine if your opinion is different. It's absolutely fine, but you need to be able to explain why you have that opinion. Okay, and we're going to use sources, and you're going to be choosing which source will support your case. Okay, here we go. Now, uh, casualties. And the letters of each source are by the side, as you can see. So this, if you want to use this source later to support your case, then you will say, I am using source A. Uh, okay, now this is World War I. This you will remember from our early lessons. We did this in lesson two about how World War I was fought in trenches. These people, they're um, to stop their trench flooding. They've got these sandbags. You remember that the conditions were pretty terrible. You can see their bayonets have been fixed onto the end of their rifles, and they are going to jump over the top. That would have, that's what it was called. They're going to walk out into no man's land, and they're going to try and take over the enemy trench. And these are British soldiers, you can tell from the helmet. And as you know, it was very, very difficult to take the enemy trench because the enemies had machine guns, and lots and lots of these people, unfortunately, would have been killed or injured. In source B, uh, call out what you think this is. Okay, I expect you got that. This is a Spitfire. So this is World War II now. And the technology has changed. The war was totally different. It wasn't fought in trenches. Both sides had tanks and aircraft. And actually what that meant was that casualties were less. Uh, here is um, a picture that we saw in week three when we looked in great detail at our um, local memorial. This is the Borden and Whitehill Memorial, uh, which covers both wars, World War I and II. And you um, will remember that you worked out which war all of these people died in. And you worked out that quite a few more casualties happened in the Borden area in World War I than in World War II. And that there were more casualties in the RAF in World War II than in the Army. And this is the National Memorial, which is in London, near uh, the Prime Minister's house in 10 Downing Street. And this is called the Cenotaph. And this is for the whole of the UK. And every year, um, all of the important people in Britain go here and lay their poppies. And they have march pasts, um, marches past sorry, from veterans who fought in wars. And that is the same picture over the whole of Britain, is that more people died in World War I. Second, so we looked at casualties. Second way we're going to look at the impact of war is bombing. So this is um, aircraft in World War One couldn't make it across the English Channel to bomb Britain, and nor could our aircraft bomb Germany. But uh, there were Zeppelin raids. Uh, there were um, approximately fifty-one raids in World War One, and so this is an example of bombing in World War One. The technology had moved on by the time we got to World War II. And as you know, all the major cities in Britain were targeted. And also ports uh, like Portsmouth and Southampton, where ships were being made, were also targeted for bombing. And the bombing, there were lots and lots of air raids in World War II. 
Okay, and there's an example of one in Coventry, which we looked at um, in a previous lesson. As you can see, it's been totally devastated. Okay, now, impact on children. So we've done casualties, we've done bombing. Impact on children. Thousands of children were evacuated in World War II, as you know, and that didn't happen in World War I because the bombing wasn't serious enough. People were evacuated to safe places. This is an example. This is my dad. He was evacuated from where he grew up in Newcastle, and he went across the Pennines to the Lake District, uh, where he lived in Penrith for the rest of the war. Uh, they went there in 1940. And... Uh, so that's an example. There were loads of other children. Let's look at the impacts on children. So in World War One, here's a famous poster from World War One, and you can see here this is a Boy Scout, and the Boy Scouts were involved there in World War One passing messages. They weren't actually in the front line, but there was a role for children. Here, these children are in. Uh, they're helping on the farms because lots of the people who usually would do all the work on the farms have gone off to fight. So that's what they're doing. And these boys, uh, nowadays they'd still be at school, but they were working in a factory. Then they'd been called up because the people who usually worked there were gone to the war and uh, they're making parts for aircraft. So that's an example of uh, children's involvement in World War One. In World War Two, uh, you know that lots and lots of people were evacuated, like my dad was. Uh, here they are all looking really cheerful and having fun, but as you know from lesson five, uh, that wasn't always the case and that sometimes people who have been evacuated were really miserable. Uh, sometimes the families that they went to stay with weren't very nice. Uh, this is a picture of a child being helped to put their gas mask on and you had to carry this with you in World War II all the time. Nothing like that happened in World War I. There were no gas bombs. And as you will remember, there was no evacuation in World War One either. In World War Two, everybody had to have a shelter. You either had one in your garden, like this one. And so here's the impact on children. This little girl she might be a bit scared to go down here at night, but it's much safer than being in your house. Uh, you also know that some people didn't have a garden, so they might have been sheltering in a public shelter, including in London. That meant sleeping on the platform of a train station. Okay, daily life. So we've looked at casualties, we looked at bombing, and we've looked at the impact on children. Daily life. So in World War One, lots and lots of people were saying goodbye to their loved ones as they go off to fight, and sadly, as you know, quite a large number of them didn't come back. Uh, so that has obviously an impact on the rest of the family, as you can see in this poster. There was some rationing in World War I, although we need to be clear that it wasn't as serious as it was in World War II. But they did have to save supplies because some of the ships bringing food into Britain in both wars were being sunk. Daily life in World War II. You'll remember that lots of people volunteered to be wardens. This lady would have to be up all night, probably going around different houses, making sure people were okay seeing if some if there was bombing they may would have to go in to that area and dig people out and actually dig through the rubble and find people uh, they'd also have to go around making sure everybody had their lights out so that you the um, enemy planes wouldn't be able to see where you were so there's lots and lots of people volunteering for jobs in world war ii uh, there were also volunteer firefighters who stayed up all night risking their lives to put fires out which we saw in an earlier lesson at source P, this one is the rationing, and occasionally when I show people this, they say, uh, I don't like liver, but uh, uh, remember that probably you would have been glad to have that because this is all you got for a whole week of uh, meat products and dairy products. You only got one egg, so you'd have to make it last, and you could, of course, have as many vegetables as you liked if you were growing them in your own garden, which most people did. That's source Q. And this is also in World War II, you will remember, in fact you can call it out, why are they painting these lampposts? Okay, well done. So in the blackout, to make sure the enemy planes couldn't see the city, uh, cities, all the lights had to be turned off, everybody had to have blackout curtains, 
and there's no street lights, no car headlamps were allowed. So to make sure you didn't fall over and bang into things, all of these curbs and lampposts were all painted like this. So you could see that at night, but the aircraft from above wouldn't be able to see it. And that's source R. Right. So your task is going to be to summarize all eight of the lessons that we've done. And you're going to look at each of these in turn. You're going to give your opinion about which war had the most impact on casualties first. I'm going to show you my waggle on this paragraph in a minute. Then you're going to do a paragraph on the bombing, one on the children. And finally, what's your opinion overall? And as long as you can justify your opinion and choose a source to go with your opinion, then I don't mind what you say. You can choose World War One or World War Two, and you don't have to agree with me. OK, first paragraph. This is my example. So I'm doing my uh, waggle example about the casualties. So I've said, I think it is clear that World War One had much higher casualties than World War Two. This is true in Borden and for the whole of the UK. The technology available in World War One meant that it was very difficult to take over an enemy trench. By World War Two, this had changed and British casualties were much less. I am choosing source A to support my case because it shows that thousands died going over the top in terrible conditions. OK, now you may wonder why I've made some of it red. Now, I think these are the phrases that you could use. Some of the examples of the type of phrases are very useful for writing in history. So I've chosen here, it is clear that, and you might want to use that for one of your paragraphs. And then later on, I've used this phrase. I am choosing source blah de blah. So I chose A, but you can choose whichever ones you want. I'm choosing source blah de blah to support my case because. So for each of these headings, remember they are casualties, bombing, children, uh, and overall. Sorry, daily life first, first, and then overall. For each of those, you're going to choose one of the sources. Okay. So you might have to rewind the video and have another look. And then the, whichever one you choose, choose it for a reason to show, to support your argument. So if you're choosing that, for example, bombing, you you might be choosing that it was more serious in World War Two, had more impact, then you need to choose a picture that shows the impact of bombing in World War Two. OK, so that's how you're going to do that. I'll be interested to hear what your opinions are and how you justify your opinions, because that's really important for history, our history skills as we get moving on into year six. So then you would carry on with your next paragraph would be about bombing, then children, then daily life, and finally your overall opinion. So that's what you're going to send me. Uh, well done. And the whole topic, all the work you've sent me has been absolutely fantastic, and I've really enjoyed it. So we we'll look forward to seeing you soon, and uh, all the best. Bye for now.